Dear friends, you know this place, and I pray that you are glad to see it again, as one day we will see it all together as we pray and worship God here in this sacred place. <clears throat> Tonight, our evening prayer takes place here from the chapel. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalms this evening will be Psalm 141 and Psalm 143, verses 1 through 12. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers, nor eat of their choice foods. Let the righteous smite me in friendly rebuke. Let not the oil of the unrighteous anoint my head, for my prayer is continually against their wicked deeds. Let their rulers be overthrown in stony places, that they may know my words are true. As when a plowman turns over the earth in furrows, let their bones be scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Do not strip me of my life. Protect me from the snare which they have laid for me and from the traps of the evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I myself escape. Lord, hear my prayer, and in your faithfulness heed my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. For my enemy has sought my life, and he has crushed me to the ground. He has made me live in dark places like those who are long dead. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the time past. I muse upon all your deeds. I consider the works of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul gasps to you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning. 
for I put my trust in you. Show me the road that I must walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, for I fly to you for refuge. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our lesson this evening comes from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to Mark. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will ha hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> we, like Jesus and the Twelve, find ourselves on the road, on the way. And these days, although that's always true in our lives, these days it's hard to know where the road leads. And we go following Jesus, I think, not unlike the disciples, the apostles that day, the twelve, Mark tells us, those who followed were afraid. They were following, they were faithful, they were with Christ. But still, they were afraid. As many times as he had said to them and urged them, do not be afraid, still they were afraid. I don't know about you, but these days that is quite often my story as well. One of both faith and the call to trust and also one of fear that sometimes is felt right here. It's difficult. You know, I've heard somebody say recently, a friend who went through, successfully went through treatments for cancer some time ago, said about the present moment, <clears throat> she said that the chemo brain, you've heard that phrase, is a lot like what she called quarantine brain. Uh, what am I going to do next? Where am I going? What was I about to do? What day is it? All those things that are happening to us, or to a lot of us. 
I think James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they didn't have that excuse. On the very moment beyond which Jesus has just said, in Jerusalem he's going to be betrayed and flogged and crucified and die, and after three days rise again, they come, leaving all that aside, and say, basically, what's in it for me? Can I be on your right? Can my brother be on your left? Can we be the most important in the kingdom? Jesus says significantly, and they don't get it, you're going to drink of the cup that I drink of, which meant for them, and it means for us, and we never know what form this is going to take. We don't know it today, that life, our lives, involve suffering. That is inevitable. It is not to be bypassed. It's not possible to do so. But Jesus brings all this together at the conclusion of this 10th chapter of Mark by saying, for him, accepting his suffering and moving toward it, for James and John and the others, maybe trying to get away from their suffering, as we might try sometimes to do as well. Either way, the call to us as disciples is a call in every time, including the time of uncertainty and suffering, to service. So I say to you this evening that the question that we might pray with tonight is in this time of pandemic, in this time of COVID-19, in this time when so much is different and so much is disorienting and so much is like we've never experienced it before and we don't know when it's going to end or how or what any of us or our families might endure in the meantime, right here, right now and through all of this, how am I called to serve and how are you called to serve? Let's pray that quietly in our own hearts and minds this night. We pray now together in response the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, <clears throat> the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, <clears throat> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. O God and Father of all whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. All nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment now in silence that we might offer our own intercessions and thanksgivings. We pray together for this whole human world in such tremendous need of your healing love. Let your anointing healing spirit descend tonight upon this world, upon all in pain, all in sorrow, all in uncertainty and anxiety, that we might all be held in your tender embrace. Let us pray together now the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, 
forever and ever. Amen. Blessings, safety, health, and shared love upon you this night and always.